Hello and welcome to I Talk to Ghosts, the podcast that would never ghost you in a bad way. I'm your haunted host, Jennifer, a spirit medium and a teller of ghost stories. Tonight, I have found some stories that you may not have heard discussed a lot. Unexplainable paranormal events that happened during date night. Can you imagine trying to get to know someone and a ghost crashes your date? <laughs> well, I would think you would certainly learn a few things about the other person really quick. Maybe this should be a new dating requirement. I think that if I were in the courting arena, I would demand ghosts. After the spooky, linger around for a new in-studio spirit reading with my podcast guest. What details will appear to be shared? We'll find out soon. Then join me at my seance table for a message from the spirits. A loved one will come close who is connected to someone listening tonight. So this message may be for you. That's later on in the podcast. But first, the spooky, the ghosts are giving you flowers right now. This story was submitted by Claire. If you would like to submit a ghost story of your own, email me at speaknow at italktoghosts.com. Thank you, Claire, for your story. A couple of years ago, I went on a date with a man I met online. Let's call him Bill. Bill and I had chatted extensively for weeks before we could find time in our schedules to meet up in person. Let me tell you, no one will ever forget the events of this date. Bill and I had a great time getting to know each other over dinner, and the conversation wandered into sharing our favorite movies and television shows. We discovered we were both really obsessed with this one show, which happened to have launched a brand new season that week, and neither of us had had a chance to watch it yet. So we decided we would go over to my place to watch an episode or two. I lived with my sister, and I knew she would be home, so I felt comfortable about inviting Bill to come over, even though I didn't know him that well. And let me pause for a second to reassure you right now, that part went fine. We arrived at my place and descended onto the couch in front of the living room's television with wine and popcorn. Halfway into episode two, I heard a noise over the sound of the show's dialogue. I thought maybe it was a neighbor being loud outside. I glanced at Bill and he was watching the show, so I tried to ignore it. A few moments later, the noise got louder. At this point, it didn't sound like it was outside and it sounded like moaning. I immediately assumed my sister was trying to play a prank on me while having a date, and she got me. I was really embarrassed. I felt my face grow hot with a blush. Bill looked at me, and he asked if I heard it. I nodded, and I paused the TV. The room was quiet for a moment, then a long, low moan broke the silence. I covered my face and muttered something about my sister. Bill asked if she was okay, and with that, I suddenly became worried. I headed towards the stairs with Bill behind me, but we looked up to see my sister already coming down them. Is everything all right? What is that? She asked me. I said we were just about to check on her. The three of us stood in the living room, listening to this weird moaning noise turn into even louder wails. It was difficult to tell where the noise was coming from. As we searched the house, 
my sister pretty much completely freaking out in the process, the cries seemed to evade us, fading and changing direction, becoming louder in a different area. I struggled with a combination of fear, worry, and the feeling of losing my mind, mixed with that first date embarrassment when things go wrong. Bill was holding on to staying calm, but his eyes held a wide expression of fear. We searched the house from top to bottom. Bill even checked out the basement for us. The noises started to sound farther away, more distant, until they faded altogether. After a few minutes, Bill called it a night and excused himself. I never heard those noises again. And not surprisingly, I never saw Bill again either. This story was submitted by Elizabeth. Elizabeth, thank you for sharing your story. When I was 17, I went out with a bunch of friends to see a movie at the local mall. I didn't have my driver's license yet, but a friend of mine did, and they had access to the family van, so the six of us all carpooled together. Included in the group was a boy in my physics class named John. Gosh, I had a crush on him all year, and finally someone in my friend group had invited him to join us that evening. Looking back, both of us agree this was our first date. It may not have been official, but we say it was because how many people can say they saw a ghost on their first date together? Turns out, both John and I were super interested in the paranormal from a young age, so this first date agreement fits us perfectly. Back to the ghost story. After the movie was over, we all hit the drive through and drove around listening to music, talking, and really not wanting the evening to end. It was a lovely summer night and no one wanted to go home. I certainly didn't. We had just seen the movie Poltergeist 2, and John and I could have talked about all the scares, including that gross worm thing, all night. As we aimlessly cruised the neighborhoods, we found ourselves cutting through the local arboreum. There weren't many gates to close it off at night, but the trails were definitely supposed to be off limits after dusk. Suddenly, my friend parked the van, Apparently, we were going to go on a night hike adventure. Sorry, Mom. I could have been doing a lot worse. The six of us wandered up the trail, goofing off and joking that the creepy old man from the Poltergeist movie could be hiding behind any tree or shadow. I gotta admit, I was a little creeped out. A fact I didn't hide because it was a great excuse to hold on tight to John's arm. Plus, I had left my glasses at home. Call it typical teen angst, but I didn't want to wear them while out. I can see well enough, but on a real dark trail, I lose my distance vision really quick. All of a sudden, my friend in the front stops short and we almost bump into him. He freaks and panics and hisses for us to scatter as he jumps off the trail into the bushes. We all followed him, piling onto each other, and he whispered that he saw someone below coming up the trail towards us. We were all afraid it was the police and we were done for. As quietly as possible, we sat there, waiting and straining to hear something footsteps, talking, the sudden yell of someone commanding for us to come out with our hands up. Nothing. Literal crickets. My friend motions that he's going to venture out and peek, and he does so. I watch him go out to the trail at a crouch, 
look down the hill and then stand and just stare for a moment. A couple of blinks later, he shakes his head, turns to us with a completely frightened expression, and yells at us to run. He doesn't wait for us, though. He's suddenly booking it back to the van. Everyone starts running, and I can't see. Luckily, I have John's hand in a vice grip, and he pulls me up the trail. I glance behind me, and I see a glowing blob on the trail below. Honestly, it looked like a really blurry person in a glowing white dress making snow angel motions in the air. That unfocused, jumbled vision quickly disappeared behind me as I decided I'd better concentrate on the ground ahead of me or I was going to break my neck. Inside the van, everyone was loudly talking over each other about what they saw. They insisted they saw a ghost. John turned to me excited and asked me what I saw. Dumbfounded and not quite sure what I glimpsed, I slowly raised my arms up and down from my sides. Everyone shouted their amazed agreement. My friend started the van and we headed home. We talked about it for days later. Except for Becky, she insisted she didn't see anything and refused to even hear someone bring it up. I don't talk to Becky anymore. John researched the area we were in and discovered that in the 1970s, a young woman had been murdered and her body was left in that arboreum. I truly believe we saw her ghost that night, signaling for us to help. I feel bad that we ran and I hope that she has found peace. My fascination with the paranormal continues to this day. Same with John. We've been married 10 years, and I love it when he reads me ghost stories at night. I am part of a group of friends who are really close. We do everything together, but I'm the only single one. Many of them are married, engaged, or dating, and sometimes it's hard to be the odd girl out. No one likes to be the ninth wheel. Well, all of my dearest friends decided it would be their mission to find me a boyfriend. One of these friends decided it would be nice to set me up with a date for Valentine's Day. She knew a guy who happened to be interested in the paranormal, as was I. Things could be worse. William and I decided to go on a lunch date that Saturday. As we got talking, we got to know about each other, and he confided in me that one of the things his former girlfriend didn't like about him was that he was interested in spooky things. At this point, I told him all my personal experiences with ghosts, happy to switch the subject to spirits instead of his ex-girlfriend. And I gotta tell you, we kinda hit it off. After lunch, we saw a movie, and then William asked if I wanted to go see the Hockey Hall of Fame here in Toronto. That's not as random as it seems. It was close by, and it's rumored to be haunted. We weren't so much interested in the history of hockey. We wanted to see if we could catch a glimpse of Dorothy. The story of the building is that before the Hall of Fame was established there, it was the Bank of Montreal for about a hundred years. The ghost in question there is that of 19-year-old Dorothea May Elliott, rumored to have a tragic end to her young life in the second floor bathroom of the bank. Involved was the bank's own revolver. There have been many rumors about why she died, with one of them being that she was having an affair with the bank's manager. We took the tour of the Hockey Hall of Fame then we were left alone to continue to explore the exhibits. 
the chills started for the both of us as we came closer to the stairs leading to the second floor. At the foot of the stairs, the atmosphere became thick. You know the feeling you get when you know something is going to happen? That is exactly how it felt. Unexplainably, the vibe of the place had gone from normal to one of heavy apprehension. William startled and said a chilling breeze had brushed past him. I, on the other hand, caught a glimpse of something. I'm not going to say it was definitely Dorothy, but I caught a glimpse of long black hair and a light colored dress. My brain reflexively wanted to disbelieve it. I knew the history of the building and knowing what happened to Dorothy, my imagination must have gone into overdrive. But my gut feeling said that wasn't true. I saw something. The air continued to be oppressive and thick. It felt like we weren't allowed to go up the stairs. I took a step forward anyway. William blurted out that we had to leave because he couldn't stand it anymore. I wanted to investigate and validate myself. That I had actually seen what I saw and that it wasn't my imagination or a practical explanation like an employee. But William insisted we were leaving. So we left but I'll definitely be back to investigate, either by myself or with friends. History and ghosts have always interest me, and this building really seemed to have both. As for William, we decided to just be friends. If anyone comes to Toronto to visit, I would suggest visiting the Hockey Hall of Fame for a little bit more than just hockey. Hello, my dear spooky friend. Do you have a paranormal experience you would like to share? Submit your ghost stories to be read on this podcast. I love sharing true ghost stories and yours could be among them. Email me your story at speaknow at italktoghosts.com. Let's be spooky together. Hello and welcome back to I Talk to Ghosts. My guest this evening is Val. Val, welcome to the podcast. Hi. How are you doing? <laughs> Great. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm I'm doing really well. Uh, I feel like the person who is uh, coming in for you is getting a little impatient with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Female energy is coming uh-huh. in very much feels like you're two peas in the pod you're very much the same a lot of love for you and um it feels it feels like a mother mother grandmother energy type of yeah (laughs) does does this make sense to you did you you lose your mom i did (laughs) okay yeah she was coming in so bright and she thinks you're her best friend. Um, that you yeah. just um there's so much love and energy there. And um she's even saying that you're soulmates. Mm-hmm. That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if she talked like this in, in regular life, but she's almost talking about lifetimes of um You've you've had different lifetimes together in different capacities, and I don't know if she had that perspective in life, but she's kind of saying that now. I could kind of see that. I mean, we like uh, growing up. I grew up on a lot of eighties, so she kept a lot of all her uh, clothes, her jewelry. I still have a lot of that now, and I still like, you know, every once in a while I'll try on her clothes and stuff like that, just to kind of like. You know, for me personally, that was the 
if I were to grow up in any era, that would be the one. <laughs> so I could definitely see that. <laughs> She's showing me that she had a lot of energy and passion in life um, and a spiritual side as well. Mm -hmm. You guys do a lot of things together. Like she was always there for you. Yeah, she um, she worked a lot. Uh, and so I spent a lot of time with my grandmother. Um, yes. but when we were together, we were, she was always trying to do something and it, like, it could be the simplest things of like hopping in the car, blasting the music and just yeah. cruising. <laughs> yeah. It feels like little adventures. Yes. You know, <laughs> yeah, de little definitely adventures. Was <laughs> like let's go just be a little silly, a little adventurous, mm -hmm. maybe not even have a plan. Um, yeah. Even if it's just going to the mall, you don't know what it's going to be like. You know what I yep. mean? That was it. <laughs> okay. She wants to thank you for helping her navigate her health issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely have been the caretaker of the family. Um, everyone, you name it. I've uh, doctors, visit, uh, hospitals, surgeries, you name it. I was, I'm, I'm the one that takes care of everybody. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, she just wants to acknowledge that strength in you. And she's got this mom energy, right, about being nurturing and providing. But she also received that from you, too, you know, and that's mm -hmm. I think that's how she's kind of expressing that you're the same. You're you're two peas in a pod type of thing. And like yeah. you, you could look her in the eye and you guys knew each other. Yeah. Um, you know, like there is. We were, like you said, two pieces in a pod, but I also had a lot of that stubborn energy from my dad, so we would definitely headbutt. <laughs> oh, sure. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. We all have that, too. <laughs> <laughs> Is your grandmother that way as well? She seems to have a little bit of a streak in her. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess so, yeah. My grandma, my mom's mom, she lives with us, and uh, she's definitely always been that feisty energy. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I take care of her as well, but she's a lot of my personality. I would say I owe that to both my mom and my grandma. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now your mom is gently saying that with your grandma, if you can help her manage her focus a little bit, it could help direct that energy better. Does that make okay. sense? Does your grandmother yeah. have the, a tendency to kind of latch on to the aggravating thing and then and then there's like this aggravation going on and it's like oh that energy could go somewhere else because it's not that bad yeah it was it's funny because I was just actually talking about this with my best friend uh you know we've noticed that like she my grandma tends tends to down talk herself a lot yeah and she kind of spirals a little bit with that yeah um so definitely yeah <laughs> your mom is just like oh you can so easily direct her focus with something she loves and it'll just mm -hmm. make her light up, you know, yeah. and kind of get her out of that. Sometimes we need some external things to get us out of our internal dialogue. And like your grandmother has a really big heart and she means well, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's so good of you to be there to shepherd that and, mm -hmm. and to care for her in that way. Um, your mom, she's expressing she regrets how she left and that she doesn't mean to cause you that sense of loss because she's still here. She wants mm -hmm. to tell you that she's around you all the time. And you know that. You know yeah. that. <laughs> I, I definitely do feel it. Um, about three years ago, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, she kind of surprised me on my birthday. It was kind of funny. Um, I was getting ready to leave for work and I went to the dining table and I was like, oh crap, I forgot something. So I walked around the table and I got the biggest whiff of her perfume. And I was like, I haven't smelled that in a long time. And I was like, oh my God. And I started crying. And like, I was like, okay, before I jump the gun, <laughs> I'm going to do like a little walk around the living room. And, you know, I couldn't smell it anywhere else but that specific spot by the dining table. And I was oh. like, okay. I was like, thanks. <laughs> oh, that is so, so sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's giving me angel imagery. Okay. And with that is coming the sense of, 
I think it's a symbol of faith. And she wants to put this faith in you that it's okay to open up and let everything flow. Uh, if that makes sense, like yeah. you're ready to kind of just break your heart open a little bit and let things flow out of you. Yeah. Um, I guess you could say like, I guess with, you know, losing her, well, mm -hmm. I guess it kind of started when the, my grandfather passed. So my, my mom's dad, um, you know, it, I think it kind of happens with everyone. Everyone loses their faith little, you know, little yeah. by little. And you think, you know, what heartbreak and, and grief and all that stuff is, you know, when I lost my grandfather, I thought I knew. And then I lost my mom, you know, mm -hmm. and then it was just kind of, I don't really believe, you know, mm -hmm. so, and it's taken me a long time to kind of, um, I guess I'm still trying to learn actually is how to appreciate and love the ones that are still here yeah. instead of yeah. focusing so much on the past and those I've lost. So, yeah, I think you could easily just love, you know, mm -hmm. love 360, everyone all the time, all around you, whether they're here or not, because in some capacity they are here. Mm -hmm. It's just different, you know? Yeah. And that is a hard loss because life is precious, right? Mm -hmm. um, but she's here. I think her her angel imagery, I feel like she wants to send that to you, like give you signs. So look for angels. Like I'm not a big angel person. Yeah. And I don't know if your mom was either, but like it came through, it almost looks like a statue. It's all white and glowy. Mm-hmm. And, um, with that, she was just like, oh, just get this breakthrough for you of letting things flow and letting things just get out of the way, break open flow. Mm -hmm. We're here, right? And yeah. if we're going to be here, we should commit, <laughs> Yeah, you know, or just appreciate the wonder of it all that it even happened in the first place and that mm -hmm. it, it, things continue to happen and how precious that is. It feels safe to hold back, but sometimes right. it's just, you know, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't yeah. feel good to do that. So I think that she just really gently wanted to just take all this light and stick it in your heart and, <laughs> and um, help ease that and just realize that, oh, there's not even anything to do. It's, it's just about kind of letting go and allowing Mm -hmm. and and you'll be there yeah okay <laughs> i'm seeing a lot of cooking and baking that's me <laughs> that's you um yeah my mom's mom so she got me into baking oh. and so there's uh recipes that have been passed down from my great grandma um my great grandma was the the baker of the whole family um, and I've kind of inherited, I guess, uh, the kitchen magic. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. I, de I, I definitely do a lot of baking. That's actually what my business is. So. Okay. As your mom hears you talking about that, she's like, don't sell yourself short. You're really good at coming up with your own possibilities. It's not all about the family history. She thinks that that's something that you really should explore. More. Like you've got really good instincts and you can see things that other people might not see mm -hmm. the potential of. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. I, um, it's funny because one of my other friends, she was telling me to stop selling myself short. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just, I don't know. I'm just like pretty bashful when it comes to a lot of things, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I'm just kind of starting to realize that, but yeah, I, I have a tendency to do that. <laughs> So working on that. <laughs> I want to talk about your grandfather a little bit. He kind of has some of that energy too, that bashfulness about him. He may have. He was on the quieter end as like yeah. for me growing up. I want to say I was about 13 when he passed. But remembering him from then, like he was always on the quieter side and my grandma was the complete opposite. Yeah. So <laughs> Yeah, because he's like, not everyone is the trailblazing decision maker you, you know what I mean <laughs> yeah. and he was like he was very content like just tell me what to do and I'm gonna be there and I'll do it but he he yep. he's like uh just um he was content to just be he wasn't really opinionated on how things had to go he was very much yep 
this is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that sounds about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, your mom is saying, just be silly. Just play. <laughs> just, just who cares if you get it wrong? If you're having fun doing it, just mm -hmm. blah. And like, I'm hearing this from her, blah, 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 blah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's funny, like hearing that because it's, um, we would always kind of reference to, uh, cause she really loves Snoopy. Mm -hmm. So, you know how, like when the adults talk, it's like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> exactly. <it. laughs> I always had it right. Yeah. It's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and so it's just that energy of, you know, even one time intentionally, <laughs> be goofy and get it wrong, you know, and, and just feel what that feels like on that extreme to just play. Mm -hmm. And cause she's just like, just have fun with it. Just, just all the, get over it, get over yourself and like, just have fun and be silly and, um, have a little adventure with it, you know? <laughs> um, and, and you'll get there, you'll get there. Yeah. And <laughs> I can't express to you, how bright and how loving her energy immediately came in. And she was like, Oh, so proud of you. Just thinks the world of you and that you and her are just together, you know? And she didn't see you just as a daughter. She really saw you as a friend and, yeah. And like a lifelong friendship and was so glad that you came into her life and you were there for her in that capacity because to share things with you was just absolutely amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I'm getting so emotional, but, um, Oh, she, yes. she was, uh, I mean, she was definitely a Pisces, very much a Pisces. And so she was always very emotional. Okay. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, like, you know, I, of course, like in the, before she had gotten sick, um, she, you know, I was in that teenager phase. So I wanted to be out with my friends and stuff like that. So, of course, like, I go through the, I wish I was there more, but I mean, I know I did what I could, you know, so she, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She just. It's such a joy to see you grow up to be such a lovely, beautiful woman. And she can't express that enough, I guess. Um, she just loves everything about you. Yeah, she was definitely my life's, my life's biggest cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have a few messages for you. Uh, be curious. Be creative. Be curious with your creativity. Okay. <laughs> uh, follow your intuition. Don't ever put your head down. Don't look and focus on the wrong things. Okay. There are so many things and ideas that are going to be beautiful that you can pull into reality for yourself and for others to experience. And okay. when you tap into that flow of things, you'll know it. And it's going to be amazing. And it starts with curiosity and that playfulness. And then just being in that groove of being creative and um, <laughs> tapping into that artistic energy and enjoying it with love. And um, when you're operating in that space, you'll know it. And when you don't feel like you're in that space, you'll know it and you'll know where you want to get back to, you know. So just work on that back and forth, that ebb and flow and what works for you, what space you want to be in. And, um, you'll get there. You know, we can't be there all the time. Life yeah. gets in the way, but then we know when, where we want to get to and, and you'll absolutely do it. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've always kind of like, uh, when I get into my baking or doing whatever it is that I'm, that I'm up to, I always pick up like a random little hobby. <laughs> mm -hmm. I always, you know, kind of have the conversations to myself and you know I'm always like am I doing the right thing I'm so just I don't know I'm so used to like coming into the room you know and just like having her kind of uh uh 
check the things out. She was always kind of like my bacon guinea pig <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and to try these things out. And it's just, I definitely miss that, uh, I guess, the validation from her. So, yeah. Well, Love she's that. here for it <laughs> in volumes. And she's still, she'll always be there with you. And, you know, it's, it's just more subtle when they're on the other mm-hmm. side. But yeah. it's definitely real. And you're you're connected to her more than anyone, you know. <laughs> um, so just trust in it, you know, and just let go and trust. Okay. And um, <laughs> when, when you feel yourself questioning anything, mm-hmm. just realize, okay, you've got a really strong analytical mind. And yeah. like I do too. And so when I like do this work or anything creative, it's like, okay, brain. I'm good. I love you. I love you, but I'm going to put you over here right now. Shh, be quiet. I'm going to work with my heart, you know, and um, there's a difference. There's an absolute difference. And you can analyze it all you want after if you want to, yeah. you know, but in the during, just do it. Just be, you know. <laughs> Look at you. Thank you so much. Thank you um, so much <laughs> for making me cry. No, <laughs> um, no, this is this has been so moving and so loving, and I think that there's a lot of messages I can benefit from, other people can benefit from. So just thank you for sharing this with yeah. me, and um, yeah, I'm gonna give you your mom's love because she has so much of it for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that she came through pretty strong because she was. A lot of my friends, you know, kind of seen her as their mom figure as well. Oh. So, you know, she was very much, and, and I get that, you know, from my grandmother. Um, and it's very much like, just bring everybody in and just love them as much as you can. Absolutely. Because um, my grandma, she had a daycare. So she was very much like a, she was very much an open house for mm-hmm. for my mom and all of her friends. And it's just, you know, kind of like that domino effect that they just love to love to love <laughs> and nurture yeah. and just be yeah. that uh that safe haven for everybody so I'm really mm-hmm. glad that she came in and yeah. you know so <laughs> absolutely absolutely okay before we go do you have a personal ghost story that you would I like do. to share most definitely <laughs> listener ghost story so when I was seven, I was gifted a hologram pendant from my neighbor. Um, so this was at our first house. Yeah. And she, um, I really, really liked it. It was gorgeous. It was a little hologram pendant of the Virgin Mary. And uh, so I used to wear it all the time. And I don't know how it started, but I was able to almost like call upon uh, my great aunt and my great grandfather. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would just kind of call them down and I could like physically see them. They would come hang out, play with me. I would talk to them all the time. Uh, my mom kind of thought, you know, I was making this stuff up and cause I think I was in, yeah, I was about seven, so second grade. Um, and so until at the time I was still sleeping in my parents' bed, um, and I had my own bedroom and I went ahead and I made the bed for them, went to bed. My mom woke up 4 a.m. She could physically see two adult imprints in the bed. And she was like, okay, there's no way that she could have done that. You know, my dad, anything like that. Um, and then I used to buckle them in, in the back seat with me, all this stuff. Uh, and you know, my grandmother was pretty upset cause she's like, okay, you need to stop playing these jokes. Um, and until I guess I finally sat down and I revealed some information that only my grandmother and my aunt were able to, that was between them. Mm-hmm, <laughs> and, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so I, I was able to talk to, talk to them for the longest time, see them. I would say probably went on for about a year or so until my mom was like, okay, you have to let them rest. And I was, you know, not ready for that, but I did that. And the only way for me to kind of like let go was having to break that pendant. Um, yeah, it was such a bummer. But I mean, at the same time, I, it, I had to let them rest, you know. So, mm-hmm. um, and I haven't seen or heard from them since. So, oh, wow. kind of, kind of wild. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, that's an amazing story. Yeah. And you know, I would just add 
I think that all of us have this ability and it Mm -hmm. it does come down to faith and trust and belief, right? And you were told you need to stop and Mm -hmm. symbolically, you know, you broke the pendant and you hear stories all the time of people who saw or heard things or sensed things when they were younger and Mm -hmm. they shut it down. You know, yeah. And then there, and then we tell ourselves that it's gone, and it's like, well, if we tell ourselves that, what's <laughs> going to be true, right? Right. <laughs> um, so, if if you ever decide that you want to explore that a little more, you know, you know, you don't have to kick open the door. You can just, you know, <laughs> peek, peek a little yeah. bit. But wow, lovely story, and. <laughs> <laughs> um, Val, you mentioned baking. Do you yes. have a, your own baking business that you would like to tell people about? Yeah. Um, so I'm based in Stanislaus County. So that is uh, Modesto, California. Um, so my partner and I, Sam, uh, we have a little baking business and we specialize in uh, regular items and gluten-free, vegan, any allergen-friendly stuff. So we really try to uh, you know, feed everybody, make sure that no one feels left out because there's a lot of stuff that you could buy at the store and they just kind of taste like a brick. So we try <laughs> to make sure that, you know, you guys are able to enjoy it. And I myself and, and my friend as well, we both have tummy issues. So, you know, it's it kind of works. So and we all have a sweet tooth. <laughs> so our business, uh, Killer mm-hmm. Sweets out in Modesto. We love the spooky. Where can people uh, connect with Killer Sweets? Um, we are providing pastries for two coffee shops, so Preservation Coffee and Tea and Cafetino, which is located inside of Cornucopia Health Food Store. So, yeah, and then we do uh, caterings and, and so on. So, yeah, Wonderful. hopefully hoping to get a couple more coffee shops this year to keep this spooky little baking business going. <laughs> yeah. Um, you'll have to give me all of the information and any links that you have, and I can put those okay. links in the show notes so people can check it out. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you so much because the world needs more yummy spooky. <laughs> oh, yes. Most definitely. <laughs> Would you like a free spirit reading with me and record your reading for the podcast? Sign up for your chance to be selected by visiting italktoghosts.com slash guest. And as an added bonus, if you don't want to leave your reading up to chance, I'll let you in on a secret. There's a discount offer to book a private session with me, so you can book a date and time for certain. Visit italktoghosts.com slash guest for more details. I can't wait to meet you. Hello and welcome back to I Talk to Ghosts. I have a message from the spirits this evening for someone listening. So thank you for joining me around my seance table. Tonight I will be working with rose petals. I love to have these close when I feel there's a spirit near that wants to convey a lot of love and emotional support. And rose petals, of course, symbolize love in so many different ways. So I'm going to ground in center and call a spirit close. Yeah, he's already here. This man, (laughs) he is telling me that he was your beau and lover and husband and you had many, many years together. Um, He was just a wellspring of good emotion to give to you and he loved emoting and when he courted you, he did so with humor He's saying that he made you laugh and he stole your heart that way. He was continuously devoted to you and life and it's just a wonderful feeling to experience. You had a very long marriage together and it never felt stale. It never felt like that passion wasn't there, that intensity for each other. When people met you for the first time, they were shocked to hear how long you were together because a love that sustains like that is just a beautiful thing to witness. 
It feels to me like one of the things you two really enjoyed together was anything that involved the water, going to the beach, going on cruises, even if it was a day cruise, like for lunch, or even just watching the sunset over the water. You just really both had a connection to water in that way. His message for you tonight is he wants you to get out and see the world and still experience things. He sees you holding back a lot with that now and you know that's understandable but of course he still wants that life of experience for you and he says that of course he was the love of your life but he doesn't want you to be lonely and if you connect with someone else that's okay and that's nothing to feel guilty about and he knows you love him and he loves you still and you know this experience of human life is complicated and multi-layered and and ultimately he doesn't want you to be alone he's even showing me that this isn't a message that you can fully take at this point and he's just saying keep it in mind keep it in mind in the future and that and if you do happen to meet someone it's okay and he knows you love him and he loves you okay I think I'm gonna leave it at that if this message resonates with you please reach out you can email me at speaknow at italktoghost.com and I would love to hear from you thank you Are you enjoying your ghostly visit? If so, please follow, like, comment, and share. The ghosts may be talkative, but they are lousy at marketing, so every click helps. Tell your friends, and please leave a kind review so that others might join us. The spirits, and I thank you. And with that, dear listener, we've reached the end of this episode of I Talk to Ghosts. I hope you've enjoyed my spirit work that I shared with you this evening, as well as those crazy stories of ghosts on date night. Have you ever had something similar happen to you? Oh my gosh, I would love to hear about it. So email me at speaknow at italktoghosts.com with your story. In the meantime, wherever you wander off to, in this world or the next, just remember, come back and visit with me. Have a lovely evening and good night.